Hello and welcome to Studio 52 in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm Lon McCarron alongside Phil Galfon. And tonight we are bringing you cash game action from Poker Night's Las Vegas residency, Studio 52. Let's get into this evening's game, which will be six-handed, playing 25 and 50 with a $50 big blind. Andy, a look at the lineup now. Super Pro MJ Gonzalez once again in the one seat. I'm sure the other players are thrilled about that. To his left, hailing from Anchorage, Alaska with over five million in live tournament earnings, it's Adam Hendricks. In the three seat, three-time WSOP bracelet winner, poker coach, husband, father, this guy, your co-host, Phil Galfon. To Phil's left, it's Bob Mather, former private detective and recently newlywed to our very own Lexi Gavin Mather. In the five-seat, Hustler Casino Livestream co-owner Nick Vertucci. Lastly, in seat number six, Twitch streamer and poker pro Jeremiah Williams making his poker night debut. Another tough lineup this evening, but I think I lucked out with my seat draw. I would not want MJ on my left. No, not indeed. An interesting lineup as we get to the action here at Studio 52. Phil Galfon in the field. Have you ever done this before? Yeah. I have not. Let's try. Very close. You want to explain your challenge? I'm throwing my voice into the booth. Oh, I'm just <laughs> streaming poker on Twitch. Nick Bertucci here like from Hustler Casino. It's not easy. One of the owners of the production company down there. Where are you at now? 140. I was at 190. MJ always here. So I'm, I'm down like six. We've got a tough table. A lot of strong players. Adam Hendricks, number one on Alaska's poker all time money list. Good, very good player. Mostly playing. I play anything like 2 5 to 100, 200. Okay. Just whatever. Top goes. two for Adam. So it varies. 400. Adam were in this hand, I would say make it 300 and I call. Are you going to try to win it with the 10 deuce? Bring in a bounty. Always playing the 10 deuce here at Studio 52. Not gonna work just yet as Hendricks goes for the check call. Check. Check. I think for Tucci wise to give it up on the turn. No pair, no draw, no hope. When's the end? 10 deuce bounty though in play. Is Nick Fertucci thinking about a raise here? It's not, a, don't be all doom and gloom. He is. That online, you know, that you can still win money. 4,000 now? It's a credible line, but ace nine is a pretty big hand. Adam does muster up a call. Nick shows the 10 deuce. Defense. <laughs> Missed it by that much. I was raised on a cattle ranch, and the cattle ranch owner owned some grocery stores. And I went up to him one day and said, I don't want to work in cow anymore. Can I work in the stores? And he's like, you know, you're a little rough to be in front of the people, but I'll put you in security. So I spent years catching shoplifters and then raised the 150. became an embezzlement investigator and then got my oh, PI well. license. Jeremiah Williams on the far right. Twitch streamer, as mentioned, got a cash game challenge. Catching shoplifters, you don't, I assume, accumulate a lot of skills to let you catch embezzlement, right? So you had to learn, like you had to, did yeah. you have to study for that? Um, no. Jeremiah flopping top set. Forensic accounting. Chuchu's middle pair after raising pre-flop. Gonna go ahead with a very small bet. The pair of jacks, Nick comes along. Look at that, mirror images of each other. It's amazing. Unfortunately for Nick, he turns to a pair. Jeremiah, very well studied player. You're going to see smaller sizings from him than a lot of other players. You're going to see a lot of solid, good poker. I was going to say that turn card is going to leave a mark on Nick, but you would watch tens of thousands. He's already done that. Body language and body language. Yeah, who to focus on? Learn to read lips. Mm -hmm. You know. Jeremiah going with the big bet on this turn in a spot where he's got a big range advantage. He's got all the ace king, he's got more of the kings, more of the queens, more of the ace ace. And now on the river, after having gone big on the turn. Jeremiah got 1,000 away from reaching his goal on his challenge. Criminal background check. Decided to do a bankroll challenge. 
And because obviously you're in the game, we are on a tape delay. He has since given up the challenge. He never could get back to 200K. Yeah, I know that he could have, but he he got a little sick of it, I think, as, as anyone would streaming day in, day out until, until you could complete that challenge. What a valiant effort and a great player. And Nick, good fold. With a very good fold there, with two pair, realizing he only beats a bluff. And he didn't think Jeremiah was bluffing. Don't go anywhere, folks. More cash game action from Studio 52 after these brief messages. Poker Night in America is brought to you by Bet Rivers. Welcome back to Studio 52 in Las Vegas and Poker Night in America, presented by Bet Rivers. I'm Lon McCarron alongside Phil Galfon. All right, getting back to the action. Adam up 5,600. Jeremiah 2,700. Nick and Bob Stucker. ATC or MJ. Queen nine offsuit qualifies certainly for any two. Are you ever going to call yourself out, or is everything you're going to do the right thing to do? I'll, I'll call myself out if, if, if I mess up. Okay. But this is a great three bet on the button with ace 10 offsuit against a player who's playing any two cards. Nick Bertucci with the cold call with threes, non standard, but it's working out so far. Mm hmm. Set for Nick. Top pair for you. And with top pair, top kicker, I'm feeling good. I am wondering what his cold call range looks like. I'm expecting a lot of suited broadways, maybe some pocket eights, pocket nines. The jack of spades is not good for me, especially if I'm putting him on hands like king, queen, king, jack, ace, queen, ace, jack. So I do check this back. Just hoping to get the showdown against maybe an ace-10 suited, maybe a pocket eights. Decided to call flop. But instead, he fires out a big bet. And you know, what was top pair, top kicker is purely a bluff catcher. You didn't like it, I could tell. I didn't like it. For him to be bluffing here, he had to cold call with a hand like, like ace three of diamonds and realize he should turn it into a bluff here. It's pretty hard for him to have a lot of bluff combinations. Good fold, sir. Thank you. Show that one quick. Nice hand. Yeah, I got. Well, whatever it is, I got. I got to finish. I just want to. Finish. Who have you played with at this table? Got it. I'll have it. How close are you? Um. What? Is that why? Is that why you got greedy? I have. Oh, this. Have I played with? I've played with MJ. I would even do it in WSOP events. Nick, he was at one ninety nine. I've probably played with Adam Hendricks in some tournaments. Really. I lost like 60 And this week, since like, this recording, I know I've played with Jeremiah online, but I, I don't think I've played with the other two. And I, there's nobody at the table I've played much with. Here I am with, with a great hand and a great shirt. <laughs> Him or you? Uh, both of us, actually. Yeah, both of you, indeed. Jeremiah with a gut shot here. So after three betting, Aces are one of the first over pairs I would check back. However, I think I prefer betting now. Just because nine five deuce is a board on which I should probably bet pretty much everything. So I don't like my play. Called myself out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jeremiah's putting 350 in the middle. Yeah. And bluff at it with his gut shot. When he bets the sizing, he's not expecting me to fold a lot on the turn because if I check back ace high, can't quite fold to, to 350. Perhaps he's setting something up for the river. Jeremiah misses. He loses the first time. So with 1,800 in the pot, Jeremiah bets 1,300. Hmm. And he's representing probably a nine or better. I was planning to raise, let's say, an offsuit three river. However, on the 10, he's now not going to bet this big with some of his 9x, and he's not going to bet the turn with a lot of 10x. So I was trying to decide if my hand is good enough to raise here or if I should just call and avoid running into pocket nines, pocket tens, five X that might bet three bet. 
<laughs> the raise there gets the fold. No, he, he already pulled it back. I knew he was We're playing a game where you have to show one card every time you win the pot. It was literally horrible. It's, it, none of that is even good memory at all. I noticed you were a little cagey about, oh, do I want to show this one or this one? <laughs> you got to keep yeah. them on their toes. <laughs> in our team, our staff, I, you know, I had people ready to quit. Jeremiah, for the was, big hand here. No, oh, MJ. I'll joke about it. Watch out. Yeah. Ten deuce. If you ask me Equally powerful hand in this game. Ten deuce taking over the seven deuce game in honor of Doyle Brunson. Go down 35. Yeah, that's and I, I, would, I would trade it back. No, I don't care. Yeah. that. There's nothing. I got enough money. I don't give a shit about that, you know. And MJ not going for the pre-flop three bet. Going to try to take this down post-flop, but gets a piece. More charges ever brought against the one, one kid. No. Well, for, for stealing the but a set of kings for Jeremiah. There. I, I don't know if they're still on or he's on the lamp side. I have no idea. I... Jeremiah checks. MJ bets. Kings make a very good <laughs> check call hand in theory here. One of the best slow plays because you block two of the remaining three kings. Making it hard for your opponent to have something to call you down with. I'm so glad you have this. I'm, I'm leaking like a sieve over here. <laughs> you should have seen me the other night. Has a queen come since? MJ drawn dead. You tell me now if it did come. That wins his prop against Nick. That's again, thinking maybe 10 deuce is good. Jeremiah deciding if you should spring the trap now, or wait until the river. Well, if he wants somebody to put chips in the pot, he's got the right man. Big raise, and MJ quickly reaching for chips, not a believer. And they've managed to build a 6K pot with right. MJ drawing dead. Uh, 10. Ouch. Two pair now for MJ. Jeremiah now goes from having the nuts to having a, a real concern about being beat. 7 6 suited, ace high clubs, queen high clubs, all makes sense. Mm -hmm. Is that a call? call? Snap call. Oh, top set? Yep. <laughs> river. That's who gets called. Can't card. blame MJ for that river call. Yeah. Bad river. I can fold without the river card. It's pretty tough to beat top set with 10 deuce, but in this game, you got to try more from Poker Night in America and Studio 52 when we return. Welcome back to Studio 52 in Las Vegas and Poker Night in America. I'm Lon McCarran. He's Phil Galfine. Let's get back to the action where MJ <laughs> Gonzalez recently paid a hefty price for trying to win the 10 deuce prop. Jeremiah with a nice start up 7,000. MJ and Bob with the most makeup work to do. Don't say that often. The ace deuce offsuit, good enough for MJ. 7 3 offsuit, not good enough for me. I'm not watching the flops either. I bet you Queen Hearts came. Looking back, do you feel you played too many hands, too few hands, or was it pretty much a good Phil Galfon session? I felt pretty good about the number of hands I played. I came in trying to play a little bit loose, but it, it was difficult with MJ getting in there with so many. Oh, right. So many hands before I was able to. He's just milking it because he knows a king of clubs is coming. <laughs> he probably has it. Bob with the best hand, MJ now with the best draw. 550. Call 550. Bet and call, both plays look good to me. And the question is, mm -hmm. will MJ decide to bluff this river? <laughs> he quickly answers for us. Yep. And bluff, he does, he goes all in. 9,500 effective. There's definite disadvantages to knowing that you're the worst player at the table. Bob Mather with a pretty weak hand, although MJ has made it quite clear that Did he's either bluffing or he's not. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, go ahead. Um, uh, fake fall. <laughs> Nice. He's really annoying, isn't he? He's very annoying. There's got to be something to the king of clubs. There's some <laughs> matrix going on, right? I think Phil, something. Can you study it? Maybe write an article about okay, it? Okay, I'll figure it out. Right. Yeah. 
raise 250. I'll get to the bottom of this one. 7 6 suited for Jeremiah. Easy raise. Ten deuce again for MJ. You know you missed a king? Did, you, did they say that? Yeah. When you're gone, this you time he plays it differently. Yeah, yeah, just for the three bet. So that's good, right? Yeah. That's good. Yeah, the only time I can Still, win nobody is fully kill. believes MJ. No. MJ, this time three betting with the best hand, technically. Right? Uh, seven in the window. 450? Great flop for 7 6 suited. Interesting. Jeremiah going with a small lead here. And MJ has to feel pretty good about his hand. 10 deuce. Yeah. 1700 $1,000 icing on top if he does win the hand. 10 deuce bounty. The reason Jeremiah leads here is he's got the advantage in hands like 7 7, 6 6, 5 5, et cetera, when a three better doesn't three bet a lot of those hands. So he gets to leverage that by small betting, lots of hands, including hands like this. MJ raising with no equity. It's not going to work just yet. Jeremiah Williams still good on the paired board. MJ's got to be thinking about shutting it down. Mm -hmm. Kind of expect when your opponent leads into you on the flop, they've either got something or they really don't. So by the time Jeremiah bets and calls, MJ figures he's got something. Two pair on the river for Jeremiah. Goes for the 10% pot bet. Another thing that you generally tend to see only from Solver studied players or amateurs sometimes. MJ can't win with a call. There is the fold. And Jeremiah gets MJ money. Oh, please. Nothing sweeter. Oh, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh, I can show choice. I had Sorry, intentions. Queen of Hearts. More from Poker Night in America, Studio 52 in Las Vegas when we return. Welcome back to Poker Night in America here in Studio 52 in Las Vegas, where action will begin with you, Phil. First to act. Back at Studio 52, Jeremiah, the man of the hour so far. They say it's suited for me, under the gun. Easy open. So will you play any of the World Series? Oh. I'm gonna be out here and there's something in July that MJ can't stay away. Might, if the dates don't work for me, I won't play the main. If they do, I will have something I might have to deuce. do. Top pair for MJ, flush draw for Adam. A little bit of something for everybody. I feel pretty good about my ace eight at this point, and I go ahead and fire out a small bet. Oh, they do. Do they rent it out? MJ just with a call. Hendrix here, not going to be folding. He's deciding if he wants to raise or call. I'm in a tough spot here. I think I usually have MJ beat, as it turns out I don't. Uh, so I have to decide how often I'm up against a semi-bluff here versus a real hand. And against a real hand, I'm not doing that great with my ace eight. And I sort of correctly slash incorrectly lay it down. <laughs> beat by the player I think I'm not beat by. <laughs> Jack of spades. Adam now turning a straight draw and two straight blockers. 2,000. It's a really effective type of hand to bluff with. And bluff he does. MJ turns a gut shot along with his top pair. The gut says don't fold. That's giving this some real thought. My gut says do not fold, but I'm not going to listen to my gut. 
Smart guy. We hadn't seen Hendricks get out of line at all. That's what MJ was thinking about. Makes me want to call. Adam, getting the best of MJ. Listen here, got always. You know that. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. You guys want to play the, the stand-up oh. game or something? Yes. Please? No, no, hold on. Time I do need a good stretch. If I play it, it's got to be like where we get a butt or something. Yeah, that's what I mean. I, I don't want to stand up. Of course. Because especially for the cameras. Like this, You're, I don't play do poker it. to stand up. We will do it that MJ way. He opens I, pocket yeah. sixes. Uh, it's really fun. He goes down? Yeah. Sure. Bob, are you okay with it? Sure. You're not going to like it. I know. Not gonna like it, Bob. So what's the game you're playing? No, I'm the, I'm the, I'm playing a stand-up game. Uh, the way the stand-up game works is everybody generally stands up. We're talking about getting a button instead. And you don't sit down until you win a hand. The last man standing has to pay everybody else. I get it. Let's do it again. I'm in. It is a pretty fun dynamic for the game. It makes people play more aggressively trying to win pots, especially when they're one of the last couple standing. I've never played one and everywhere is sitting 30 bigs. MJ best here with the two pair. Jeremiah three bets out of position and decides to check his seven six suited here. I like this check, it's tricky. Usually you three bet, you're the aggressor. You flop a draw with no showdown value, you would bet. But here, if he goes for the check call on the flop, had MJ bet, it looks like he has showdown value and so his future street bluffs are gonna be very credible. Movement. 1200. I think that's big on the turn and similarly, MJ's thinking, well, if he just like, <laughs> had a hand he wanted to bluff with, wouldn't he have just bluffed the flop? But, but no, MJ sniffs it out. Draws for Jeremiah. They do not come home. Caught MJ counterfeited. This is a funny one. Yeah. Both players with a potential bluffing end. Both players really, really low in their range. It's nearly impossible for Jeremiah to have a hand this week in his three betting range. <laughs> exactly. So he decides to bluff. Yeah, I can fold fast. Happens to have the best hand, but he was gonna get bluff if he checked. He'll take it down. Nice hand, Jeremiah. I like the way they each played that hand. Interesting run out. Seven high makes the difference. And we are playing that stand-up game. We've got a button in front of each of us. Give your button away once you win a pot. Let's see who wins a pot. Bob with a screen of clubs. Jeremiah, do you want to draft uh, who we think is going to sit down next? Nah, I'm good. You get bored pretty easy, huh? You know, I like to gamble. <laughs> a lot of decent hands here. Yeah, top pair for Bob. Ace is up best for MJ. Broadway draw for Adam. Bets 475. MJ bets just small enough that it's going to be tough for Adam to get away, but no, he does. Call 25K. Obviously not going anywhere with Ace Queen if you're Bob. Mm. Hey. Better Ace is up now Put for up Bob. The flags, There's the Queen of Hearts. Oh, wow. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, he was distracted. Something <laughs> something went wrong. I've been like just yeah. missile locked on every yeah. turn. That's 1300. MJ, value betting is two pair, but it is no good. I just think he doesn't want and me to. Bob here is trying to decide if he wants to call or raise. That's my button. When you're just watching a hand, are you putting people on hands or are you resting? I'm resting. Yeah. I should be putting people on hands. That's the better thing to do, but it's too hard. It's too hard to keep focusing. <laughs> too hard. <laughs> Poker is hard. Yeah. All in. All in, though. You heard him. This is a snap fold. Is it? MJ doesn't believe that Bob is bluffing, and he doesn't think that he beats a value jam. He's thinking, maybe is it Queen Jack? Maybe is it Ace 10 of Hearts? Nope, I have the Ace of Hearts. Maybe is it Jack 10 of Hearts on a bluff? Possibly. I don't know what to do, Bob. And in this know. game, I would think that would be a pretty easy call to put Bob on a no bluff. Yeah, I think so. Sorry, as well. guys, I'm not a time waster. He's putting a lot of money in here on the turn. He could have 10 8, he could have King 10, he could have Ace Queen, he could have Queen Queen. 
lots of value hands he can have. If you're trying to look for bluffs, it's Jack-10 suited, King-Jack suited, and he might not play those this way. So. How much do I owe? It's 8,050 total. So MJ trying to decide if he's up against semi-bluff or if he's up against Queen-Jack. For the record, guys, this is a fold. It should be a fold. MJ thinking, this isn't a hand I'm really supposed to fold in theory, but I really don't like it. Yeah, trying to find a coin to flip. <laughs> looking for a thousand, five thousand chip under it. He's gonna mark the chip and flip it as a coin. Pierce, so he doesn't want to fold. The chip says fold. Oh, that Don't hand, do it to me, Bob. Can we see the flop? Bob Mather finally drags a nice pot we there, but he must be feeling He's like spinning. that was his chance to double up. We'll be back with more action from Studio Fifty Two in just a moment. Welcome back to Poker Night in America's Studio 52 in Las Vegas, Nevada. Jeremiah is still the big winner here. Studio 52 and a rare night where things are not going MJ's way. Be nice to see you in a pot, sir. I'll do my best. They need to give me a hand first. Okay. We run it once, you win. Nice hand. MJ needs to not raise. So far, one of, two, one of the two of them has happened. Yeah, there you so go. 150. There's a hand. But I'm kind of used to that. <laughs> I don't think that you did anything wrong. Thank you. Oh, boy. You're going to get Mather money? Well, like I said. Well, let's see. Two callers. Table. Pretty good hands. Wow. Bertucci's hand a little bit weak, but now it's a pretty good hand. Yeah. Flush draw. But Nick flops a straight. Check and then hope I blast river. I have my bluff. And he leads out. I do have some check So. Funny thing here is I actually didn't believe him, but I think no need to bluff with my ace high. I think he has a hand like eight five. So why don't I call, see if I can hit my flush and he keeps bluffing or, or maybe make a hero call if the board bricks off. And when the better straight hits <laughs> on the turn, what do you do? <laughs> well, you keep betting 600 <laughs> into 900. Once again, very easy call. I'm not actually considering doing anything else. Um, and I still think my hand is good. It's important to make reads at the poker table, but it's also important to know you're not always right. So now I think he's probably going to bluff again. 1,300? And he bets about half pot. I have the nuts, so I'm going to raise. I think the correct play here, in theory, is to go all in. But I feel like... If he did somehow get here with 10-5, uh, or if he did get here with a weaker flush draw, or if he somehow was value betting flop, which in this case he happened to be, raise. probably be more likely to call a smaller raise by enough that what is it's it? better to raise smaller on average. What a bad river. Wow, you a pre-flop raise. you really have spades? I'm with 6,000 instead of all in. I had the nuts until that spade came. I don't think I can fold. I mean, it's the button game, yeah. and if you have spades, you have spades, right? Nick is not loving this. No, he knows he only beats a bluff at this point. He has the six of spades. Yeah. I'm starting a new uh, poker training site. It's called Downswing Poker, <laughs> <laughs> where winning doesn't matter. OK, how much? I just, it's, just a, it's just a bad river. It is a bad river for one of us. Nice hand. Thank you. That's so sick. And there goes your button. There goes my button. Five, six. They made it easy on me. There you go. I played a hand and look what happens. I should play more hands. Mm. I'll buy some from them. I'll buy some from So you. Adam and Nick have buttons left. Is that right? Think. Weak ace. A raise from Hendrix. King nine suited. Good enough to play. I'll just call. Bob comes along, jack 10 of hearts. 
300. All right, Nick, I'll play a little defense for you, my man. Thanks, man. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of defenders this end. Thank you. Four way. You'll see Hendricks normally doesn't open a six offsuit here, but he's got that button he's got to get rid of. And that is the impact it has on the game. I flop bottom pair. The weak gut shot it gets checked to me. Bob, middle pair and open ended. I decide to bet. I don't think my hand is best here, but I think with a couple of bets, I could make a hand like ace jack fold. Do it for Nick, huh? Oh, too late. I do have some outs. We're good now. Go ahead, Speaking anyway. of which. There you go, king eye straight. He played it perfectly. Exactly. So Bob's not going to have ace king here. He would three bet that pre flop. So I have the nuts, but we are going to chop a lot. I'm trying to figure out what size I can bet across two streets to get called by two pair, get called by ace queen. And Bob has that two pair. I settled on 800. He calls. That's why they don't have more chips. Took all the greens. Is there a lot of green there? And this is a great river. <laughs> Because now we both have a straight. Mm, you've got the super straight. I do. So how much can I bet and still get called by the board? I think maybe something up to 2K. That's 1800. 1800 looks good past Phil. Got it. Nice hand. Thank you. And can't blame him for calling. No, beautiful run out for you. Yeah. A lot of action behind you. Is the, what's going on behind you here at Studio 52? Distract you at all? It doesn't. I actually ignored it. Like, I, I forgot it was happening while I was playing. Better have it, because I am <laughs> folding around. <laughs> it's a lively spot. <laughs> that it is. Jeremiah with the three bet, king nine suited. <laughs> MJ, not, not happy, but no. folding is four suited. Uh, Nick's in there, and unfortunately for him, his two low connected suited cards are dominated. Well, Nick with top pair. Dominated no longer. No. Jeremiah, king high, back to a flush draw, back to a straight draw, just checks back. Now, a front door flush draw for Jeremiah. Interesting turn. Nick just thinking his hand is best, putting out a little bet. He could have put out a big bet here representing a straight, but I think not with the cards that he held. And once again, a straight on the board. Diamonds come home for Jeremiah. Does Nick want to bluff at this? Seeing if he can Full Jeremiah off the chop, which as we can see, he does not have. 1,000? He does, he bets 1,000, and Jeremiah with the second nuts, well, technically fourth nuts, but realistically, second nuts. I would expect to put in a raise here. Raise? There's that face from Nick again. Two or eight in your hand. Maybe that's just... Mirror images of each other. It's really crazy. Uncanny. I fold. And there he gets a fold. Makes a good fold. And... Good night for Jeremiah. Studio 52 gets better. Poker Night in America is brought to you by Bet Rivers. Back at Poker Night in America at Studio 52, Jeremiah Williams, big winner so far. Nick Fertucci going the other way. You didn't want to mention me, second biggest winner, Long? We didn't have time. Sorry, we ran out of time. That's fine. We'll get you next time? Yeah. Green. Thank you. Thanks, man.
Jack Jones. nine suited. I've got a weakness for that. Nick with ace king. You raise six hundred. Hmm. Jeremiah running good tonight. Ten deuce might be a good choice. Goes with the cold four bet on the button. I think if we pulled everyone's hair on their knuckles together against you, you would still have more. I was just about to say that. That's... What the f does that mean? <laughs> well, he's got some hairy knuckles. Look at him. I got hair on my knuckles? Huh? I got hair on my knuckles? Too much hair right on my knuckles? Right here. Off. It's actually a hereditary thing. I wasn't getting involved here. You believe this guy? Mine's light. Never play poker with friends. An interesting spot for Jeremiah with 10 deuce. You don't Stop it. necessarily have to get involved just because there's a bounty. And he does have to put in 1600 trying to win that 1K bounty, but he does go for it and he's got two live cards. Ace, ace, deuce, trips for Nick. Or at least he used to have two live cards. And two pair for Jeremiah. Two pair. I think Jeremiah's gonna bet 100% of his range here. All of the hands that he could have in this spot for a small sizing. This is one of them. Nick has to decide if he wants to go ahead and raise now or just call, which is what he opts to do. Jeremiah can only win this hand now by betting. Jeremiah wondering if maybe he has the best hand. Maybe he could show this down, win against a king high. Or if he's going to need to bluff at it. I'm taking 50 for sitting. 5,600 in the pot. And he's going to fire out a big bet. 3,350. How much? I like the train just dropped off about a dozen people. They start this hand 26K deep, effective. So there's a lot of money left. Nick Bertucci is trying to figure out if he wants to get it all in. He very, very often has the best hands. Really hard for him to be beat. But he also needs to get called by something. So he's trying to decide, do I want to put in this turn raise now? Do I want to check call and then decide on the river whether or not I want to raise? It's a tough, tough spot. He's looking to put it in now. Jeremiah's 10 deuce will not oblige. Nice hand. What did you fold, 10 deuce? 10 deuce, he's, Nick saved us all. Jax, you guys jumped in there. I'm like, I'm stuck too, I'm playing everything. Oh, I offered it to you. I wouldn't have offered it to like. I appreciate it. Jeremiah, he just wins all the money all the time. Nah. <laughs> nah, I would be done. He's queen off suit, nice hand for Adam Hendrix. I would be free. Be honest, be honest. Raise from ace queen. You were at the 199,000 mark. Yeah. Call from king nine and ace four. You started to go on a downer. That night, were you frustrated? No. See, this is why. I'm ace not... is up for Adam. Top pair only for that Nick. Manage their emotions in a way where it's like they're just completely, absolutely indifferent at an, like, an absolute level. I truly believe he has that ability. And it's the rarest thing in the world. Big hand for Adam Hendricks and it is so, like, win or lose, a nice size bet to go along with it. Nick not going anywhere with his top pair. You're a freak of nature. Ooh, Did you ever used to ugly tilt? card. Tilt or? Trips for Nick, but ace is full for Adam. I don't know. You think you like that card. Yeah, I would like rants and stuff. As Nick Bertucci, but. Oh, I run so bad, this or that. But in fact, there probably couldn't have been a worse turn. Time in the game. Really? Just time in the game. Not in a single moment. Seeing some <laughs> Seeing some Like, well, like, for the viewers that are listening, right? The guys yeah. that are still trying to grind up. Hendricks or trying to hoping succeed. that Nick has oh, what he has. Like, what was something that helped you realize? And, and no decision for Nick here. He needs to call once again. Uh, you don't want to raise ace four. It's a little too thin by the time you raise and bet the river. Don't gamble with what you can't afford to lose. So just easy just check call. Yeah. Hendricks with the nuts needs to decide how much he wants to bet. Yeah. Bankroll management. Adam had to decide if he wanted to represent a very big hand like he has, or if he wanted to represent a thinner value bet. He goes with the big, big bet. 
Like and she'll sit down and say Nick stuff. now knows that he only beats a bluff, but he has a really good blocker in his ace. Chance corner to explain. Where the? Yeah, it's cool. Where do you guys come from? Like, what part of AI are you? It is cool because there. Are, maybe it's true. I I don't feel like there are many. It does make there. the call. That's the bad news. Adam Hendricks on a nice little rush here, Studio 52. One last commercial break, but we will be back with more poker before we wrap things up for the evening. Back at Studio 52, Adam up 12K, taking over the lead from Jeremiah Williams and Phil, 6875, you're up. Okay, nice job. Thank you. Phil seems like a... 9.30 p.m. bedtime kind 8, of a 8.30 p.m. Oh, wow. Yeah? You go to bed that early? 8.39. It's true, folks. 8.39? 8.30 or 9 o'clock, yeah. What time do you get up? 5.36. Why, why do you get up so early? What do you do? Our, my son gets up. <laughs> oh, that's fair. Thank you. And that's my, when I'm my most... Uh, when productive. your son wakes you up at 5.45, what can you do? Do you? But I go to bed around 10 or 11. Do you need an alarm anymore, or you just wake up? Does your wife keep the same I like to have an alarm. Just in case. <laughs> like, I didn't. I didn't know. Bob's best. <laughs> top pair with a king oh, kicker. Oh, MJ. Top pair with a bad <laughs> kicker. Could have saved me a hundred dollars. You check? Yes. Okay. I'm gonna bet. I'm gonna keep it small for you. I'm gonna bet three hundred dollars. You didn't okay, bet. I think in his hand is nope. probably best. Three hundred. Going for a value bet. Uh, check. I'm going to bet one thousand dollars. How many hands do we have? This is the second to last hand. All right, all in. Okay. <laughs> it's about the snap call. He's wondering if he's up against 10, <laughs> 9, or deuce, deuce. That was a rubber band snap call. <laughs> ah, he hit me drop with it that. up okay, tens full. The social game thing inspired yeah. me. I'm like, oh, it must be 8.30. Yeah, the game's got to break. <laughs> Phil's got to go to bed. Adam, the big winner, up over 12,000. Phil, you won yourself about 6,500. Not bad for the evening. Even MJ managed to finish in the black after getting into trouble several times with 10 deuce. As for our two losing players, Bob Mather leaves stuck 7,400, and Nick Bertucci dropped nearly 22 dimes. If you want more Poker Night, be sure to follow us on social media for highlights and exclusive hands of the day. Plus, you can find all our episodes and our 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, Twitch, Plex, and many other services. Check PokerNight.com for details on where to watch. Also, don't forget to download our free poker app with regular sweepstakes contests, all new game modes like blackjack and slots, and it's all totally free. Search for us in your app store and download it today. For my co-host, Phil Galfon, and everyone here at Poker Night in America, I'm Lon McCarran. Thanks for watching. My gut says it's not cold, but I'm not going to listen to my gut. You should listen to your gut always. There's definite disadvantages to knowing that you're the worst player at the table. He's really annoying, isn't he? I had the nuts until that spade came. I'm starting a new uh, poker training site. It's called Downswing Poker, where winning doesn't matter. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. <laughs>